It's nearly impossible to maintain a straight course outdoors with no compass unless you have a fixed point of reference. In dense woods or blindfolded, it won't take long to begin walking in small circles. Without a reference point, small errors in direction accumulate. So how do dung beetles, which are small, frequently surrounded by large vegetation, and often rolling their ball upside down, remain on a straight course? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Dung beetles are generally very small scarabs, which collect dung, roll it into a ball, either by themselves or with a mate, and then move it a fairly long distance in order to bury it and then lay eggs in it to raise their young on. And this forms their underground nest. But to do this, they have to not only be able to roll this ball, and move it, but move it in a intended direction, and for frequently a very long time, so several minutes going in a in the right direction. So how do they maintain their directionality? The obvious answer, and which we've known about for quite some time, is that the sun dictates their movements, or largely dictates their movements, and this has been known for a couple decades. And it's not particularly surprising because many insects rely on the sun for their directionality. They can either use the exact position of the sun in order to orient themselves, or like honeybees and also dung beetles, they are capable of perceiving polarized light and can orient themselves that way. But what becomes more interesting about the dung beetles is, one... They are frequently found in forest environments in which they cannot easily see the sun because of dense canopies. And two, there are many, many nocturnal species. So, there, this mystery still exists about how dung beetles in general orient themselves. And the research into this subject has revealed that dung beetles have an internal celestial compass which is calibrated not only by the position of the sun, but also the position of the moon, the position of the Milky Way galaxy, uh, the polarized light that is visible from the sun or moon, and modified using wind direction. And all of this can be, one, observed in nature, but two, can be tested in the lab. I will link a couple open access articles if you are interested in reading about this. It's an extremely fascinating topic. But there has been a lot of research done on this, and the obvious answer for how you would test this is to blindfold the beetle. If you are doing this in the lab, you can literally just construct a blindfold and put it on the beetle. Uh, but in nature, uh, the equivalent of a blindfolded beetle, if we're talking about the celestial compass theory, is a day in which you have complete... Uh, obstruction of any celestial components, so a heavily overcast sky, not just darkness, but um, inability to see the stars, inability to see the moon, inability to see the sun. Although that doesn't necessarily stop the polarized light issue. But in the lab, you can actually blindfold the beetles. When you do blindfold the beetles, or when you uh, test them under an overcast sky, they can no longer maintain their straight lines and the resulting paths become very, very convoluted. So on a starry night, and this is with the nocturnal beetles, when the, the night lights in the sky are available, so the moon and the stars, particularly the Milky Way, you end up with beetles that follow extremely straight paths and they can figure out where they're going. With a blindfold or an occluded sky, you end up with these completely chaotic paths in which the beetles can't really get anywhere. And this is true as well during the day. So during the day, and you can test this using a, a light point source like here, beetles will orient themselves to the point source or the sun, if that is what you're testing, and they will move repeatedly in a straight line. And you can pick them up when they get to the edge of this and move them back to the circle or move them back to the center of the circle, and they will repeatedly follow this straight line over and over and over again. If you remove the point source of light or obscure their vision of the sun, you once again end up with these uh, psychotic sorts of 
pathing issues in which they can't really get to where they're going. They can't form their nest. So this is uh, a well a well uh, researched topic about how they uh, navigate with the celestial compass. This celestial compass works for whatever light it is that you're uh, talking about, whether it is the sun, the moon, or the stars, or in a lab setting, if you have a fixed light source. In the lab setting, if you move these light sources or reflect them away in some way or change polarization, you can automatically get the beetle to adjust its course. What is interesting is in nature, this stops being as effective at high noon because the sun is no longer near a horizon. Uh, the beetle can't really adjust its direction because the, the sun is directly overhead. So no matter which way it faces, the sun is always in the same direction. So how does it orient itself? And the answer is, is with the wind, uh, which is very clever because frequently the wind will pick up at the hottest part of the day. Uh, but it takes note of the wind direction when it starts out. And as the sun gets more and more overhead, it will adjust its direction based on its own, its own position against the wind. And then as the sun moves farther down towards the horizon, it can begin relying on the sun more. So if we look at all of the celestial cues, it will basically look like this. In the middle here, you have the bug brain. And how does the bug brain work? So the top half here, you have the night in between sunrise and sunset. And the primary way that it moves is either with orientation by the Milky Way galaxy or orientation by the moon and its uh, lunar polarized light. Once the sun is up, species active during the day can now rely on the sun's position near the horizon, either at sunrise or sunset. But in the middle of the day, it must augment this positioning with wind. Uh, and then all day, it can kind of rely on the position of polarized light. So this idea of a celestial compass can actually be partially seen and also experimented with uh, during the process that the beetle is actually beginning to roll the ball. So when dung beetles have formed their ball, what they do is first climb up on top of it and then begin spinning. They make a full 360 degree spin and then they climb down, position themselves upside down and begin to roll it. And during this spin, what they're doing isn't just looking around. They're taking note of the position of celestial objects and light sources. And you can uh, do this in the lab as well. They, they still have this behavior in the lab and you can artificially arrange the light sources to test uh, what, what it is that they're seeing. But it's only during this spinning uh, when they're looking around that they actually create a mental map of the celestial sources. So in the lab, if they take a, if you have a, an arrangement of lights and they take a snapshot image of this, it doesn't matter if you change the lights afterward, if you add more lights or, or what have you, uh, because they already have this snapshot in their head. And those are the only lights that they're paying attention to are this, are these memories that they have. So you can add more lights. It doesn't matter. They don't care about it. If they do this, or after they've done this, if they begin rolling the ball and they lose control of the ball, or they fall over or they get lost in some way, they will again climb up on top of the ball, do a 360 view, remap all of the celestial objects, and then begin rolling the ball again. And this is true for both uh, day active species and night active species. And this, this process is frequently referred to as the dung beetle dance. So there you have it. That's how dung beetles get around. This is how they pay attention uh, to the world around them. And they do have the ability to remember their, their surroundings. And what's interesting is that these dung beetles are the only known insect that is capable of navigating by moonlight or starlight. There's a few birds and, and obviously humans and I believe seals can do it as well. Uh, but this is the only known invertebrate that does it. So that's pretty cool. I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, thanks for watching.